In May came word that France will give their Mirage 2000 fighter jets to Ukraine. That's the second Western fighter type after the F-16, a bunch of which were promised a year ago. Now that the first F-16s have finally arrived in Ukraine, it might be a good time to compare the two fighter jets. This video will explore which type is likely to be the lead in which kind of a mission. It will also explore how both planes might perform in certain situations, like in air combat versus Russian planes or trying to operate near Russian sand defenses, or simply trying to engage ground targets. So, stay tuned. Just to be clear, we are comparing only the variants that will be most widely used by Ukraine. That's the ex-Belgian, Dutch, Norwegian and Danish F-16s and French Air Force Mirages. The F-16s coming to Ukraine were produced in the mid to late 1980s as AB models. During the late 1990s, they were modernized to the MLU standard. Mirages were originally C models, made from late 1980s and upgraded to Dash F-5 variant in the early 2000s. Both plane types are sort of of similar vintage. Though the F-16 is a bit older, it was also a bit more advanced for its time. It was one of the first planes to use a fly-by-wire control system, where a computer made sure the plane's relative instability didn't cause issues. Mirage used a similar system a few years later. But we're not gonna waste time on history nor on trivial stuff like which plane turns better. That sort of stuff simply isn't gonna be much of a factor over Ukraine. So let's first focus on what matters – avionics. Both planes use pulse doppler slotted planar arrays for their radars. Both arrays are of similar dimensions. Though Mirage's RDY radar is of newer vintage than the APG-66 radar, the F-16's V2 variant came a bit later than the French RDY. Relying on indirect indications of both radar's vintage and tech levels, it's likely both radars can offer comparable performance when it comes to air detection range. Original APG-66 radar had ranges advertised by the manufacturer. At 85% of detection probability, it yielded some 56 km against an F-16 or 68 km against a more typical target with the RCS of 5 square meters. The V-2 variant found in MLU planes doesn't have such figures published, but there are mentions in the literature that V-2 increased range across the board by 25% which works out at 70 km against F-16 and 85 km against a 5 square meter target. Against 10 meter square targets, and older Sukhois may have even bigger RCS, that would push its range to 100 or so kilometers. Sadly, as we said, there is no comparable source for the French RDY radar. The manufacturer simply never gave out any clear range figures. So, desperate measures mean we resorted to a blogger named Stelflanker who calculates RCS values of 3D plane models and models various radars based on their input values. There are certain bits of info about RDY radar known, such as antenna size, average power, antenna gain, frequency and so on. Certain bits of the radar equation were estimated though. Anyway. The final result of inputting all the data suggests some 80 to 85 km range against a 5 m square target, pretty much in the same ballpark as the F-16's radar. The few kilometers of distance is well within the margin of error. There exists an RDY-2 radar, but it appears the French Air Force did not bother modernizing their mirages further with said model. Basically, there is no way to know precisely, but the two radars should be very similar in pure air-to-air -air detection range. If there is some advantage, it's likely F-16s, but it's very, very minor. The US radar, however, supports six AMRAMs fired at once, while the French radar supports four similar missiles. That's a choice based on the limit of such missiles carried by the Mirage. Perhaps a bit bigger issue would be French radar's limit of maintaining track of 8 targets while scanning for other possible targets. F-16's radar is credited with 10 targets tracked while doing the same. If there are ever large formations in a battle, the F-16 might do somewhat better. Unlike its predecessor, the RDI radar, the RDY was somewhat designed for anti-ground missions, but it still lacks some features. 
The non-RDY2 variant that French planes have seems to lack high-resolution mapping mode and tracking of targets on the ground. The F-16's radar does have those options, however rudimentary those are compared to today's cutting-edge radars. In essence, the F-16 might be able to use its radar to see a synthetic image of a ground location and to keep tracking objects on the ground. Likely from short distances, like a few dozen miles, but still, Mirage 2000 won't be able to rely on its radar for that. In nighttime missions or overcast missions, that might be a boon for the F-16. But let's get back to air-to-air. -air. Ukraine will surely get the Mika em missiles for their Mirages. Those subvariants do likely exist, those are not mentioned in open literature, but that's perhaps beside the point, as neither the US nor France are going to be sending their latest and best variants to Ukraine, so no AMRAM-Ds and no whatever current Mika em variant there is. Meteor missile was not tested on the Mirage, so that's a non-starter. We do know, however, that the UK announced it had sent its AMRAMs to Ukraine. That happened years after the UK rebuilt its old B AMRAMs into C5 models. Basically, that suggests Ukraine got C5 AMRAMs, as Britain had no more older models by then. C5s feature a somewhat longer rocket motor and newer electronics, compared to the B variant. The missile ranges are, as one can imagine, secret but generally the Mika em is credited with up to 80 kilometers in range. That may be pushing it to the absolute limit though. It may require a high-speed launch and a lofted trajectory to reach an almost sea-level target area. For the Amram C5 there exists a nice simulation of its performance, taking into account a whole lot of open source data points. It suggests C5 struggles to reach 100 kilometers and does that only when the missile is near sea level, and going well under Mach 0.5. Considering AMRAM is a larger missile, it's not strange that it has a certain edge, range-wise. Its larger radar array and possibly more powerful radar could also have a slight edge in target tracking and jamming resistance. Though those differences should be fairly small. While AMRAM was made to do 30G maneuvers, that still lags behind Mika. Mika was designed to sustain 50G maneuvers, as it's really a missile for both close and medium range fights. Its Mika IR variant has a different seeker head, but the rest of the missile is the same. Said missile is basically what Sidewinder X is to the F-16, only bigger and generally more potent. Sidewinder X missiles were observed in Ukraine, fired from NASAMS launchers, so it's plausible Ukrainian F-16s will also get them. Also, Norwegian F-16s had Iris-T short-range missiles integrated to them. Due to the blunter nose and different trajectory limited by the guidance, Mika IR has a somewhat shorter range, usually estimated at around 60 km. It can be fired without a lock-on, using data link to be steered where needed, before its infrared seeker locks onto the target. It's a useful weapon to be sure, and Mirage 2000s pretty much always carry a pair of those. So when it comes to air-to-air -air missiles, the F-16s might have a slight edge in long-range interceptions, especially against more sluggish planes. At medium ranges, the Mirage might be more useful, both handling enemy maneuvering fighters better and relying on infrared-guided missiles as well, in situations where radar jamming is strong. At short distances, Sidewinder 9X and Iris-T are likely better optimized than the Mika IR, but frankly, it's unlikely such fights will occur often. Ukraine's plane would likely either launch from afar and flee, or would simply get shot down before getting to fight close up. That's why we also won't give too much weight to maneuverability. It's simply unlikely either Mirage or F-16 will get to situations where they will be in a turning fight against Russian planes. So the fact that Mirage 2000 can do its first turn faster due to its delta wing, but then lose a lot of energy and speed, again due to its delta wing, and is more helpless than the F-16 in its second turn, that's really not important in modern day fights over Ukraine. Even more so, because there will likely be more Russian planes in a fight. Crater numbers again largely negate maneuverability metrics. The F-16s that Ukraine is getting have received missile approach warning sensors. Denmark, Belgium and Netherlands installed those on their planes. 
Those are helpful as they can warn pilots of a fairly precise moment when an enemy infrared guided missile will reach them and will include the missile's direction. Mirages lack such a system and thus they have to guess when that will happen and which direction the threat will come from. Russian planes still use medium range IR guided missiles, partially in a similar class to Mika IR. If Ukraine uses their planes in low altitude missions near the front line, infrared guided missiles may also be a common threat. Both F 16s and Mirage have radar warning receivers to deal with enemy fighter radars and radars in actively guided missiles. Though even there, a missile approach warning sensor can help give just a little bit more timely warning. The Mirage does have an internal radar jammer. Radar jammers can mess with both radar seekers and missiles and with targeting radars like in enemy fighter planes or tactical SAM systems. Of course, the performance of such units is classified, but it's not likely the Mirage jammer is very advanced. It's plausibly a quarter of a decade old technology. F-16s can generally carry a fairly large jammer in a centerline pod but Danish F-16s seem to have a more compact jammer integrated into their underwing weapon pylons. It's unclear whether Dutch and Belgian F-16s have those pylons integrated as well, but there are some indications Norway too procured those. While the European countries giving F-16s to Ukraine did not use thawed jammers, it's possible we may yet see those integrated when actually used over Ukraine. As said, the system was cleared for the F-16 and is used by the US. Those generally help against medium and long-range SAM defenses, but can also help against air-to-air -air missiles. So, knowing all that, which fighter makes a better platform for air-to-air -air combat? Before we answer that, let's explore some basic flight performance data. According to the SAWS data, Mirage 2000 can hit a climb rate of 60,000 feet per minute. It will fly at an altitude of up to 60,000 feet. That compares fairly well to the F-16A, which can hit 55,000 feet per minute when it comes to its climb speed, and can reach some 54,000 feet high up. Mirage has 16% worse thrust to weight ratio as it's both heavier and has a bit less powerful engine, but it was optimized for the interception role, unlike the F-16, which is a multi-role plane. The F-16 has a simpler engine intake while the Mirage has a variable intake which compresses the air more efficiently. Ultimately, Mirage has somewhat better acceleration and speed figures in most of the flight regime. Still, the difference isn't very big and can be offset with F-16's other qualities and its AMRA missile. The F-16 excels at range. Using three external tanks, it can reach almost 3800 kilometers. Mirage 2000 reaches a little over 3300 kilometers. That's the ferry range, of course. Depending on many factors, actual combat range for a mission will be a third of the said number, give or take. Mirage's delta wing configuration and less advanced engine aren't as good for fuel efficiency. The F-16 generally carries heavy stuff on its underwing pylons, so it's better suited to air-to-ground missions. Now, as said, the ex-French Air Force Mirage 2000s were fighters only. They allegedly did not have any air-to-ground weapons integrated, but as their underlying fire control system is the same as other Dash 5 variant planes, it can allegedly be easily augmented with various weapons. Already there have been some rumors that Sculp EG and Storm Shadow cruise missiles will be integrated. And if that's true, integrated French hammer bombs is not far either. Mirage would likely carry a single cruise missile under its belly. One fuel tank less would be of little consequence here, as the plane would be unlikely to approach the Russian border before launch anyway. Using hammer-guided bombs, it's likely four to six such bombs would be used depending on variant and fuel tank loadout. Hammer bombs have already been seen on Ukrainian planes, as they have been integrated to older Soviet planes. France has publicly stated it will be supplying 50 such bombs per month to Ukraine. But frankly, other than using those two weapons, it's not likely Mirages would be going on ground strike missions. The F-16s are more likely candidates for those. They simply have far more weapons already cleared for use, with a few more that could fairly easily be integrated. As said, most F-16s coming to Ukraine should be updated with Tape 6.5 software, 
that is listed to support many different weapons. Of course, just because the software supports it, it doesn't mean all those weapons will be given to Ukraine. Amram D, for one, isn't looking likely right now. Chasm cruise missile may not be a priority either, as Ukraine will be using similar Storm Shadows and Sculps for the time being. The only US weapon sort of lacking from that list is the Stormbreaker Glide Bomb, X Small Diameter Bomb 2. That would actually be quite useful to Ukraine, as it's meant to use its cutting edge seekers to engage moving targets from 90 kilometers away. But even the US has only a few thousand of those, as it's a new weapon. And so far it has not even been scheduled to be added to US F-16s. So that weapon is not likely anytime soon. Another weapon that could be integrated is SLAM ER, a small cruise missile that the US Navy uses. Several hundred should still be in its inventory. And the missile itself was tested on Turkish F-16s, so its integration should be no problem. The F-16 could also likely carry air-launched decoys, basically compact cruise missiles which fly alongside or forward of planes and lure enemy fire onto themselves. Of course, said system could also be used to protect the Mirages in a mixed type formation, but the F-16 can carry it, while the Mirage can't. And when it comes to heavy bombs, Mirage's options are limited. For each one-ton bomb or a large cruise missile, it has to lose a fuel tank. So while in theory it can carry two or three such bombs, that means losing too much fuel. The F-16 can carry two heavy bombs and still retain all three fuel tanks. Anyway, such heavy guided bombs would likely take the plane too close to Russian air defenses. For both Ukraine and Russia, standoff weapons are the name of the game. Both planes are thus a pretty decent fit for Ukraine and could even complement each other. In air-to-air -air role, a very quick reaction is needed, the Mirage might be slightly more preferred. On the other hand, if going after distant large support planes or heavily laden strike planes, the F-16s might be somewhat more suitable. But all those differences are fairly small. In general air-to-air -air combat, offensively there are just a small set of differences between them, though defensively the F-16 seems to have a more comprehensive subsystem suite. It may suffer losses a bit less frequently. When it comes to strike missions, however, the F-16 is noticeably better, offering greater range, more payload, heavier payload, and a much greater variety of weapons for all sorts of missions. But F-16 has other benefits too. The US is likely to send greater quantities of weapons, more bombs, AMRAMs, and so on. In the long run, meaning years, far more F-16s will be available on the market as various countries retire them. The US alone might free up a few hundred airframes. Mirage 2000 hasn't been sold nearly as much as the F-16. The French Air Force will most likely be sending its own Mirages. A dozen are already retired and the rest might be sent as they get retired in the next few years. Of the countries using the advanced Mirage 2000, which are India, Greece, Taiwan, Qatar and UAE, only Qatar is plausible to sell some back to France immediately, if they don't go through with the possible sale of those planes to India. Greece and UAE might sell some back over the next few years. Comparing the F-16 availability to that, Ukraine has already some 95 F-16 airframes pledged to it. Those won't of course arrive all at once. It will take a few years. Ukrainian officials openly said there are 12 pilots currently trained in Europe and 8 more in the US. So the first F-16 batch active within Ukraine will likely be for even fewer than 20 planes. Some more planes will likely be maintained in NATO countries, of course. France is allegedly already training some pilots for Mirages. With all that in mind, the F-16 is simply the more sound choice for Ukraine overall. But when other countries are paying for it, why not have both at the same time? at least to the extent of the numbers of pilots available. Which is why Ukraine is doing just that. And if its officials are to be believed, Swedish Gripens may join those planes in the not too distant future as well. Those are currently being under a pause, simply because it's hard to train enough personnel on many different plane types.